Today, my friends, we're gonna go big. Welcome back everyone, I'm Caleb Dennison, and by now you've probably figured out that I have the absolutely massive 97 inch LG G2 OLED here, which as you can imagine, I'm pretty excited about. Hope you are too. And since I have such a huge TV in here, I decided to fill up the room with other big things, including some sizable Klipsch speakers and subwoofer, along with an impressive Onkyo Integra AV receiver with some pretty prodigious power to throw at said Klipsch speakers. I also still have the Monoprice Monolith sub kicking around in here just for fun, so you'll see a bit of that beast as well. So yeah, not gonna lie to you, I'm having a little bit of fun here. I mean, I've been grinding on the reviews for a while now, and those are fun too, don't get me wrong, but today I'm indulging my inner home theater geek and doing my best to bring together both the knit nerds and the decibel dorks? <laughs> no, that's not gonna work. I'll have to keep working on that one. How about the audio aficionados out there? Bring them together all in one video where we can talk about what going big gets you these days. Now, despite whatever the title of this video may end up saying, I still haven't decided on it yet, I'll stop short of saying that this is the ultimate home theater setup. I mean, you could spend more and you could go even bigger. But for me, this is the best setup I've had in this room for a while. So let's say this is the ultimate home theater rig for me in 2022. This is definitely the biggest actual TV that we've had uh, on this channel, delivered in the biggest crate that I've ever had to maneuver up to our floor. I'm breaking a sweat just like thinking about it. And the biggest overall speaker system we've had on the channel since our original Klipsch Home Theater System video from back in 2015, so like seven years ago. Yeah, it's about time we did another. So sit back, relax, get comfortable and enjoy. Let's talk a little bit about what it's like to have a system like this in your home. And if you like this video, you know what to click. I appreciate it as always. Also, let me know down in the comments if you'd like to see more content like this. And if so, what your ultimate system might look like. Never know, I might actually be able to put it together and put it on this channel. I mean, hey, if I see enough support from y'all, then I will 100% make this a series. Okay, let's do it. So let's start out talking about the 97 inch LG G2 OLED here. Then we'll talk about the audio system and then we'll bring it all together and talk about what it's been like to enjoy this setup. Now the 97 inch OLED here has surprised me in a number of ways. Y'all probably know I reviewed the 65 inch G2. I've spent several hours with the 77 inch version and I've seen the 97 here many times as well. And before this 97 inch TV arrived, I had already formed some thoughts and opinions on it. One of them being, yeah, it's just gonna be a bigger version of the G2 OLEDs I've already seen. Another being, this thing is gonna be preposterously massive and is gonna look ridiculous in this room. Also, when I posted photos of this TV on my social media accounts, I heard a lot of similar comments about how most houses don't have a wall that could handle a TV of this size and how you'd have to sit so far away from it because it's so big that it would be pointless to get for the average size living room. And I get all that, I mean, that intuitively makes sense, but from what I've experienced here, None of that is actually the case. First off, saying this TV is just a bigger version of like the 65 inch G2 OLED is kind of reductive. Like I wasn't prepared for how much all that extra OLED screen real estate was going to impact the experience. I mean, I have a 100 inch screen and an ultra short throw projector at home, so I thought I knew what to expect. But I haven't seen an ultra short throw projector that can hold a candle or even 1000 candelas to this TV. That's a nit nerd joke, sorry. Anyway, more on the experience in a moment. Let's keep talking about how wrong I was. This TV is not preposterously massive in the way I expected it to be. Don't get me wrong, it is imposing. It is indeed large and in charge. It dominates, but it doesn't absolutely take over the room quite the way I expected it to. And frankly, now that I'm really looking at it in context, compared to a 65 inch TV and thinking about what kind of wall you'd need for it, you don't need a palatial estate to accommodate this TV. You'll need a fat wallet, so maybe you do have a palatial estate if you get this TV, but it isn't necessary. Like, if you'd rather have this TV than a car, then you could do that. It's four foot tall, so about half the total vertical clearance of the average home's wall. And it's about seven feet wide, which I don't know what the average home's wall width is in the US, but 
10 to 12 feet wide seems to be pretty common based on some of the houses I've been to recently. So yeah, it may dominate the wall, but I think more folks have space for something like this than they might think when they just try to wrap their heads around the idea. And finally, I'm surprised at how close to this TV I've been able to sit and really enjoy it. Actually, I didn't move our couch back at all. I normally sit about nine to 10 feet away from the screens I'm reviewing when I'm just kicking back and watching. And I've been watching this TV from the same distance and it not only hasn't been a problem, it's been magical. But you know, I'm gonna talk about the experience in detail shortly. Let's shift over now to this audio system for a bit. This is a Klipsch reference premiere system comprising two RF8060 FA Mark II speakers, an RP504C Mark II center channel, which forgive the Apple box stand, but it was the best I could do on short notice, two RP600M Mark II monitors, and on top of those, two RP500SA Mark II Atmos or height speakers. Then we've got the SPL150 15 inch 800 watt peak subwoofer, holding down the base department with authority, I might add. And I only folded in the monolith subwoofer because I figured why not? But to be honest, the Klipsch sub on its own actually integrated a bit better with the system. And driving all of that is the Integra 5.4 AV 9.2 channel receiver, a bit of a Titan itself, putting out about 120 watts per channel peak in two channel mode. A little less when driving a multi-channel setup, but still well more power on reserve than the clip speakers actually need. For sources, I've used everything from an Xbox Series X, PlayStation 5, Sony 4K Blu-ray player, Apple TV, uh, right up to the LG G2 itself via eARC and our EAT B-Sharp turntable. I've listened to vinyl, CD, Spotify, Apple Music, 4K Blu-rays, HD Blu-rays, Disney+, Plus, HBO Max, and Netflix for music, movies, TV shows, and concert videos. Now, I wanna focus in on a couple aspects about the Klipsch reference premiere speakers we have here. The RP8060 FA have integrated height speakers for Dolby Atmos and DTSX support. If we peel away the integrated grill, you can see that what we have recessed in here is basically one of the RP600M speakers that we're using for surrounds, but firing up to bounce sound from the ceiling. On the front baffle, we have two eight inch ceramic drivers in that classic Klipsch copper color, and then a newer tweeter design up top with a one inch titanium driver tweeter in what Klipsch calls a linear travel suspension, made it to probably the biggest 90 by 90 degree silicone Tractrix horn I've ever seen. I personally think it looks amazing. The center channel has the same tweeter mated to four five and a quarter inch ceramic woofers. So the cabinet is not super massive, but the sound that comes from it absolutely can be. Then the RP600M, these could easily be your front left and right speakers as they are capable of some pretty tremendous output on their own with a potent amount of bass on tap, by the way. But in this system, there are surround channels, six and a half inch ceramic woofer and the same tweeter that we've seen in the rest of the system. And then up on top are the Atmos speakers with the same tweeter yet again, and one five and a quarter inch woofer each, making them some of the most overachieving height channels speakers I've ever seen. Speaking of overachieving, I suppose now is as good a time as any to mention that the total system cost, not counting the source components I mentioned or speaker wire, interconnects, HDMI cables, banana plugs, etc., rings up at right around $30,700. Now, if you were to build this system yourself, I think we could safely round that up to $31,000 at least. That's $25,000 worth of TV, $2,200 worth of AV receiver, and $3,500 in speakers and subwoofer. That, my friends, is a lot of money. And it is also a lot of surface area dedicated to both picture and sound. Honestly, based on that alone, without turning anything on, I already loved it. But then I turned the system on. And it, well, actually, it's the other way around. The system turned me on, big time. First off, this 97 inch LG G2 OLED TV has ruined me for watching TV at home. Getting OLED picture quality at this scale, it's just really difficult for me to explain to you just how awesome it's been. Like literally me sitting in awe of a TV, that doesn't happen very often anymore. I suppose that Samsung's new 98 inch Neo QLED TV might be able to come 
pretty close. But like I said, just from a picture quality and visual experience perspective, I'd take this 97 inch OLED over say the Hisense L9G or PX1 Pro and a really nice projection screen. Presuming someone was just giving it to me, that is anyway, <laughs> which is not gonna happen. I mean, granted, either one of those UST projector and screen options would cost one fifth of what the 97 inch G2 costs, but, and I'm not here to comment on whether this TV is worth the expense. I'm just here to tell you it has delivered an at-home movie watching experience unlike anything I've ever had before. The scale is amazing. The way it engulfs me in the picture, extending right to the edges of my vision and delighting with perfect black levels, impressive HDR performance, gorgeous colors, and exacting detail, it's been a real treat. I am so glad I got to see this TV in this space and enjoy it for several days. And I'm not kidding, I might cry a little when I have to box it up and send it back. And not just because it will literally hurt me to deal with that crate again. But as amazing as this TV has been on its own, it's when I integrated the Klipsch and Integra audio system that ventured this into territory of unadulterated delight. First off, let me just say that getting the Klipsch speakers dialed in was effortless. As effortless a process as I've ever had setting up speakers. Without touching a tape measure, just eyeballing everything, I just placed the speakers so the backs were about 18 inches from the wall. I placed them about as far apart as the TV's width would allow. I kind of towed them in a tiny bit, rather unceremoniously, and then I wired them up. The center channel is also unceremoniously placed on an Apple box, which amazingly puts it right up under the TV's lower border. It isn't angled up at all, and by all rights, it really should be. And then the surround speakers, like I don't have the proper speaker stands for these things. They deserve so much better. They actually need better speaker stands than I have in this studio space right now. But that didn't end up mattering at all. I didn't even measure the distance between each speaker and my listening position. I just placed them close enough to what I thought looked right and figured I'd make adjustments later. Guys, I have basically made no adjustments whatsoever. That's how effortlessly the Klipsch Reference Premier speakers have integrated into this space and with each other. I did a basic channel output calibration, but at first I didn't even run the direct live room calibration routine. I just let her rip so I could have some fun. And honestly, I could have just left well enough alone because this system sounds superb. And to say it's been fun, that would be an understatement. The RP8060 FA2 main speakers sound effortless with everything they do. They offer some of the best imaging I've ever heard in this room, and that was effortless to achieve. They offer some of the most precise instrumental positioning I've ever heard here. They are remarkably well-balanced, even though they should probably come away from the wall a bit more than I have them placed here. The bass has weight, presence, and punch, but it doesn't so much as flirt with the concept of bloat. The mid-range is linear and open, and the detail in the treble is an absolute joy. The transient response is pretty remarkable. They are agile, they are fun, they can dress up and go to the opera or dress down and get nasty in the mosh pit. Whatever you want, you can have it with these speakers. Don't be nasty. The Atmos effects though. Folks, I've been impressed with some of the sound bars we've had in here but this is next level Atmos at home. I mean, maybe the six and a half inch drivers in the Atmos channels up front is overkill, given they're crossed over at about 180 hertz. I don't care, let's have it. Are the RP600M2 overkill of surrounds? Probably don't care. They have been a delight. I listened to, how many times have I said delight? I don't care. I've listened to a lot of multi-channel music. Yes, I still have many SACDs, make fun of me all you want. But it was so fun to listen to these custom surround mixes on this system. The Toto 4 album in multi-channel SACD, forget about it. I heard it on this system and I just didn't want to leave the room. I might actually spend the night here before I have to pack all this stuff up. And that's saying something because honestly, this is the most uncomfortable couch my ass has ever had the unfortunate occasion to meet. It will not be nice to sleep on, but I won't care because I'll get more time to listen to this system. And that's really, really all I want right now. Like yes, CES is coming and there's a lot of work to do, but it's also the holiday season and I need badly to decompress and just enjoy music and movies for a while. And there's no system I'd rather do it with 
than this one right here. Now, I've not said a lot about the Integra receiver, and that's because it just kind of gets out of the way, which is pretty high praise these days. The clip system may not need all the power it has on tap, but it sure is nice to have. And it's handled switching among our game consoles and 4K sources a breeze. Also, Dirac Live, in my opinion, is redeeming auto calibration systems, if you ask me. But I digress. Fact is, the system sounded amazing already without it. Now, I know you may be thinking that something like all of this is not really achievable for you at home, and maybe this exact setup is indeed a bit out of reach. I mean, it definitely is for me. But it gets me excited thinking about the systems I can put together for much less. Uh, ones that could get me very close to what I experienced with this system. Something to aspire to. Uh, for the immediate future, this is going to be a reference system for me, or more like a reference experience. And from here, I wanna see if we can best it. Like, let's see what other kind of audio systems we could put together for $6,000. Let's see how close we can get to this 97 inch OLED experience for a fraction of the cost. Let's see how much bigger we can go in this room together. I guess you could say I'm getting pretty excited for 2023 and mostly because I'm going to close out 2022 with one hell of a bang. If you need me, I'll be right here watching and listening to this awesome setup. Thanks as always for watching everyone. Did you have fun? Please let me know down in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you on the next one. And until then, here's two other videos I think you might like.